Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I thought I would do a quick channel update to talk about some things that I'm doing on another channel, NSF, otherwise known as nasaspaceflight.com. You may have heard my voice already on a few of their live streams, and I spent the last couple of days down in Florida touring launch pads and watching rockets take off, and I was hanging out with Das there on the left-hand side of the picture, along with Max and Kevin. And wow, was it a great adventure. I've got all sorts of cool stuff to show you, so let's get to it. And this whole thing came about in a rather interesting way. As many of you know, I've been very frustrated with how the YouTube algorithm has been working lately. So anytime I veer off in a slightly different direction, even in a different area of technology, I'm punished for it. So when I went down to cover the launch of NASA's Artemis One, the uncrewed mission to the moon, uh, those two videos I did performed very poorly, in fact, worse than I thought they would. I knew that it wasn't going to appeal to everybody, but it was far worse than that. And what really frustrated me is that YouTube didn't even show the thumbnail to my subscribers. So it's not like people decided not to click on it, they just didn't see it. And this is how YouTube works now. They want you siloed in a very specific niche, and if you step outside of that, well, you're going to lose viewership, and that's what happened here. But what's interesting about how things work is that uh, one of my friends at NASA Spaceflight happened to see the video and reached out to see if I wanted to do some collaboration with them. And of course, I was very eager to do that because I love what they do. And if I could find an outlet for my space enthusiasm, that would be a great opportunity. So I connected up with them. If you haven't heard of NASA Spaceflight before, they've got both a website and a YouTube channel. So you can find a lot of great written articles at nasaspaceflight.com along with their forums where you find a lot of space enthusiasts. And then they've got their YouTube effort at youtube.com slash NASA Spaceflight. They're getting into the range of a million subscribers. They're up to about 809,000 now. And their live streams are very, very popular. They cover just about every rocket launch uh, going on here in the United States and sometimes outside the U.S. They've got live cameras on the SpaceX Starbase 24-7. They've got uh, cameras down in Hawthorne, Texas, looking at some of the other testing facilities for SpaceX. They've got cameras at uh, the Kennedy Space Center and the Cape Canaveral area that are running 24-7. So if you are into space, you will definitely find a lot of content over there. And they've really upped their game on recorded content as well. So it's not just live stuff. They've got a lot of rich content, uh, both on the website and the YouTube channel. Now, I have already contributed to four different launches, uh, one of them in person, the NASA Crew-7 launch, which I'll show you in a little bit. And I also provided commentary and hosted a couple already as well. And you'll probably be hearing me on a few more in the near future. And these are fun to do because a lot of them happen at times when I'm not working on the channel, at least this channel. So it's not uh, really a, a, a impact on my day-to-day -day work here. And I can still uh, scratch the space itch over with my friends at NSF. Now, over the last couple of days, I had an awesome adventure with these folks down in Florida. Here's a picture of me in front of the Delta IV launch pad, and it is as enormous as it looks. In fact, even this picture doesn't do it justice, and that's one of the things that's amazing about spaceflight, especially when you see it in person. These rockets are huge. These launch pads are huge. And somehow these things can not only get off the ground, but go into orbit. Now, once you see one of these things take off in person right in front of you, you become a changed person. That happened to me 10 years ago. And after that first rocket launch I watched, I had to see every single one I could. So I am up to, I think, seven now. And it never gets old. It's amazing. And I think that same bug hit all of the NSF crew. And that is why they are so passionate about bringing these things to you. Now, both the Delta IV rocket and this Atlas V that you can see here on screen are owned and operated by the United Launch Alliance, or ULA. This is a company that's a joint venture between Lockheed and Boeing. And they do a bulk of the US military's launches and have been doing so for quite some time. They are also now getting into the crewed space business. And this rocket, the Atlas V, along with the one that will be replacing it at some point in the future called Vulcan, uh, will be taking astronauts up in addition to cargo. And so what they constructed at this launch pad, which is 41 at the Cape Canaveral Air Station, is this crew access tower where there's an elevator and stairs that will take you up to the uh, crew access tunnel here. And that will get you easy access to the rocket if you intend to fly to space when that rocket is ready. And here's the crew and I up at the top where the crew will get out. The good news is that on this floor, the, uh, you don't see all the way down to the bottom through those graded 
uh, flooring elements there, those steel graded floors. Uh, but when you go down a level, you can see straight down through the floor. And we had to take the stairs down because the elevator stopped working. And so it was a little bit, uh, you know, if you're not into heights, it's maybe not your thing. But it is uh, pretty cool to see what a crew might experience uh, getting onto a rocket or getting off a rocket. What this is right here are the zip lines that would carry the crew away should there be an anomaly. So what they would do is hop out of the capsule, run through the crew access tunnel, get into a basket and basically be whisked away uh, to safety on the ground. We did not get a chance to actually take the zip lines down, but you can get a feel for how far down they have to go uh, should there be an issue there. Now we also watched the rollout of an Atlas V rocket. And this will give you a really good sense of scale. And I was very grateful to the folks at ULA for allowing us to get this close to it. So they basically take it out on a train. It's regular old train tracks. Uh, they've got the rocket, of course, mounted vertically here. It moved a lot quicker than I expected. This Atlas V is configured in its most powerful configuration with five solid rocket boosters that assist its launch. And this is probably the last of this most powerful configuration to go. This rocket is soon to be replaced by the Vulcan, uh, which is run on a different type of fuel and is a bit larger. This was a military mission. We were not allowed to know what was inside of that uh, nose cone there. It is for the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office, but the details are uh, not, not quite clear because it is a top secret military mission. But these pictures, I think, in video kind of give you a sense of scale here about just how big these rockets are. And this is one of the smaller ones, actually, so uh, pretty cool stuff. As this uh, pans down here, you can see the rocket nozzles uh, out the uh, bottom of the launch pad there as well. And then later that evening, we went out to the Kennedy Space Center to cover the launch of Crew-7 to the International Space Station on board a SpaceX rocket and Dragon spacecraft. And one of the fun highlights of the evening beyond the launch was watching the astronauts drive by in those Teslas that they put them in. So you can see that happening here right in front of me where I was uh, helping out the NSF crew with their coverage of the event. I hosted a good portion of it and I'll put a link to the coverage in the video description down below. What's great about the NSF team is that they are so knowledgeable and I have a lot of questions which I pepper them with <laughs> throughout the entire stream. So I'm learning a lot here uh, as I contribute to the cause. So that was a lot of fun. The launch was amazing. This was my second night launch and the first SpaceX rocket I've seen take off at night. And what's amazing about launches as you watch the launch take place in front of you here is that you see it go up before you hear it. It takes about 25 seconds or so for the sound to reach the NASA press site, which is about three miles away from the launch pad. And then it becomes overpowering. And the uh, humidity that night was rather thick. So you can see my camera was having a hard time getting the right exposure just because of how the uh, humidity was impacting things. But you could feel the uh, shock waves in the air more so than I've had on prior launches, which was pretty cool. And another neat thing was the landing for a couple of reasons. One is that the uh, landing burn that the rocket does on the way down was very short. Many of us speculated that it was too short. So the rocket came in pretty hot, but it managed to stick its landing anyhow. And just like the uh, rocket going up, it takes time for the sonic booms of the rocket landing to reach us a couple miles away. Have a listen. Uh-oh. Oh, there, there it is. is. There, there is. we go. Oh, come on. Ready for the booms. Come on, guys. And give us a phenomenal shutdown on the pad. Bang. That was Did good. It? Ooh. And wait for the booms. Everybody, Great. hold on, hold on to your butts. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> yeah! Love that. Heard the squeal, squeal, too. Woo! The VAB just. And I played that out in real time so you could see just how long it takes for the sound to reach us a couple of miles away from where the landing zone is. It's unusual that a space station mission has the rocket actually land back at the uh, landing site at Cape Canaveral. Usually they have those land out on the ocean on the drone ships, but this trajectory allowed them to bring it back to the launch site, which of course is a lot less expensive. Now it was a very late night as the launch took place at 3.30 in the morning, and then I had a flight home a few hours after that. I got eaten alive by mosquitoes, even with bug spray, but it was worth it. It was such an amazing couple of days down there. 
It was an honor to work with a team of enthusiasts that really cares about the content that they're putting out, but also really cares about the space program and telling people about it so they can understand just how important it is for our species to continue exploring beyond what we know. And you'll be finding me, hopefully, on a number of their upcoming streams and videos. And it won't impact anything on this channel. I'm doing this kind of on the side, but it's something that's been a passion of mine for a long time. And I'm really happy to find an outlet for that, uh, given how poorly the space stuff was performing on this channel. So definitely follow me over there. I'll probably put together a playlist of all the things that I'm doing on their channel so you can see my con contributions to the effort in one place there as well. But definitely subscribe to their channel. And I thank you all for watching. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.